everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I was thinking this morning, what was I going to talk about? Well, as I'm looking to see what I'm going to wear this morning, I think, what do I want to wear? And I think, think warm. So that's what I do. When I'm choosing what I'm going to wear in the morning, I think, what has long sleeves? And if I have long sleeves, what sweater can I put over top of it? Or should I wear a sweatshirt? Or should I wear a turtleneck? Or should I get a scarf? I, I think warm because it's cold outside. And you know, I've been watching the news and I've seen how um, a lot of you have snow. We, thankfully, haven't been hit yet. They keep talking of, of snow coming our direction, but it's usually dustings. And so far we have, my husband says, if we get a northwest wind, we'll be getting the snow. So far we've not had a northwest wind because we don't want to get the snow from Canada coming Actually, down upon it us. It would be more of a westerly wind. Westerly wind? Well, it's northwest been a... Northwest will put it up over the hill. It's been a southern, southern, <clears throat> southwest or southeast. Yeah, those are good because it pushes it all into Canada. Yeah, so we've been getting the warm winds. And this weekend's supposed to be in the 40s, which is good. This morning, my light was off on my chicken water, but the temperatures haven't been very warm. So um, Jim changed the light bulb on that. And the reason it had burned out is I've been using old bulbs that I've had in lamps, and I think it's time for them to all start burning out. You know how when one light goes out, it seems like you're changing every bulb in the house eventually? And that's what I think was happening. So now it's got a new bulb in it. We we bought a bunch of them because it's a it's one of the older bulbs. It's an incandescent. It's an incandescent bulb, and they're the LEDs are what's coming out, and they don't produce the heat like the incandescent. So we bought a bunch of them so that we won't run out. So I've got enough to last me probably six years. I'm hoping at least, maybe a little longer. Depends how fast they burn out. Yeah, hopefully they don't burn out. I hope they last at least a year, each bulb. That would be nice. Um, also, when you change your batteries, I had this brought another thought. When you change your batteries in your smoke detectors, I don't know if you write the date on them. I always write the date on them because I want to know, how long does that battery last? And when it starts to do that little beep, you take it out and put a new one in. Um, they say you're supposed to change those on either your birthday or a holiday or something daily you, savings or you choose hygiene. something that helps you remember that you're going to change it okay now i was watching this is this is a little bit old question but it's it was a question that um bob from mountain crest farms had asked he was saying he wondered wondered what we in the east call our the or the world or the north Northeast, where Yankees. The, the Yankees, Yankees the Yankees. <laughs> I guess I'm a Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he wanted to know, do we call it stuffing or dressing? Well, we call it both, to be honest. The dressing is when it's cooked in a, a separate pan. We make dressing. And when we're making stuffing, we're putting it into the bird, so it's it's stuffing then. So we, I guess we make both. But on the boxes of the Stove. stovetop, I think they call it stuffing. Stovetop stuffing, they call it. So apparently the, the merchants um, call it stuffing. But it depends on where we put it as to what we call it. Also, I was thinking, like, I've heard different ones talking about they were going to have their Thanksgiving dinner. Our lunch. I don't think it's a lunch, people. <laughs> that really, my foster kids used to say that. When is lunch? And here you're cooking a, a huge meal. I says, lunch is a sandwich and some soup. If you really want a sandwich and soup, I can make that and you can have it now. Otherwise, you're going to have dinner. And dinner for us was usually at one o'clock. And then you would have um, leftovers probably later in the day. That could be your supper, I suppose, but it's usually just leftovers and you would have your dessert later in the day. Same thing for Christmas. I don't do lunch. I do dinner. And for our dinner, a lot of people for, for Thanksgiving will have the turkey. 
Some people do the ham and turkey. I just do the turkey. And for Christmas, I might do the ham and I do sausage. It's the Italian hot sausage that I buy from Tuscany because they've got the best sausage out there. And I make some kind of pasta, spaghetti sauce, but I use eggplant in it. It's, a, it's more of a, it's got the um, sausage cooked in it so it's got a good flavor. Or I'll make pig's feet and put that in the sauce and that really adds a lot of flavor because the, the pork hocks or the pig's feet, they add a lot of flavor to your sauce. And then for New Year's, I don't really cook for New Year's, but my parents used to. We used to have tripe on New Year's or we'd have, and snails. We'd had the two things that I didn't like. I like tripe now, but I didn't like snails. And when we would get snails from the Italian import store, which is no longer there, my dad used to order them, I think, to get the snails. I'm not sure how he got them, but the Italian import store used to have them. And he used to buy them and bring them home, like, probably on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. And he'd put it in a bucket of water, and then the snails would climb. It was like a five-gallon bucket. And it was filled, maybe, just enough to cover the snails so that um, they had room to climb out of the water and up onto the wall of the bucket. And as they were climbing, the water would get dirty because they were pooping. And then he would take them out of that bucket and they'd put them in another bucket of water. And they would do this probably three or four times. And this way they cleaned their system out so that when you ate the snails, which, oh good Lord, I don't know if you like snails or not, the escargot. <laughs> and to me, it's awful. I, it used to look like if you, if you were to cut a worm apart, that's what it reminded me of, the guts of a worm. And, um, and it tasted pasty. I thought it was pasty tasting. I didn't like the feel of it. In fact, I had to eat, I think I had to eat two or three. And the only reason I had to eat just that many is my mother didn't like snails, so she wouldn't make us eat very many. But we had to eat enough to, to taste it in case we might like it where my father ate them and my brothers ate them, but I come to find out my brothers really didn't like them either, but they used to eat them. I couldn't, I couldn't even stomach it. I would, I would have upchucked. So that's what I would have done. I was also looking up, um, why are kids putting a little cut in their eyebrow? This is something that the teenagers are doing. And I guess it's a fashion that used to be years and years and years ago, and it's come back. And they, it's, really I, cut. it's, removing, it's the removing the hair removing on their the eyebrow. They're making a bald spot. They're supposed to just take it and shave it. Well, my granddaughter did it, but she plucked it. So now it's going to take forever. And it's like some of them will put one in their eyebrow. They'll put one little piece. Then there's some that have put three. And there's some that have done like eye, eyebrow missing, eyebrow missing, eyebrow missing, you know. Kind of a pattern. It's like an AB pattern. If you know AB patterns of school, that would be um, the kids do. When I tell the kids do an AB pattern or do an ABC pattern, it's where something repeats every third or every second. That's what an AB pattern is. Well, I guess I've covered it for today. Did you find out why they put the the marks in? It's just a fad that was, the fad was there years and years ago and apparently it's coming back and they just are doing it. You know, kids at one time, they, and uh, some of them, I'm, I'm, I didn't finish my thought, but I've got to go to this other thought. Some of them will actually put the little, shave that little spot in their, in their eyebrow and then they'll pierce the other eyebrow. Let's hope they don't do that. Yeah. But some kids do, so, and it's, it's where they, at one time, when I was in school in the 70s, I, the, the big thing was to put a streak in your hair. You'd take a piece of your hair from back here, and it was a big long piece, and you would bleach it out, and you'd have one white or blonde streak in your hair. And I was going to do that, but not really, because I wasn't allowed to do that stuff. But I did cut a piece of my hair out and put it under the color light, and I turned orange. So mine would have never, never gone to a nice white. You would have had to strip my hair 
down to the real brittleness to get that that color out because I have a red I had red undertones in my hair and red is a very hard color to get rid of and then after that then the kids were doing like tattoos and and ear no ear piercing came next so when I was in eighth grade I had my ears pierced now my mother had her ears pierced when she was a baby and I says why wasn't why weren't mine done as a baby well she couldn't couldn't see herself piercing a baby's ear so it never got done. So when I was in eighth grade, one of the girls that I went to school with, her sister was piercing ears. And so I went to her house and she rubbed alcohol on it and used a needle and pushed it through. And you had dental floss in your ear for a while and you put olive oil on it to keep it so that it'd slip and you, every now and then you'd squeeze it to get the little pus pocket out. It was a real ordeal. Then there was the self-piercing earrings that were like an earring with a pointy thing on it and it had a circle on the other side and you'd put that on your ear and every now and then you were supposed to squeeze it, which would be, I think, painful because you'd be squeezing till it hurt and then you'd stop and eventually it would squeeze all the way through. Well, we did my sister Anita's ears with those, but we didn't just squeeze it a little bit. We squeezed it and it went all the way through. Then my sister Lucy's ears, she had tough ears for being a young girl. We had to actually, we put the needle through and we had to actually use pliers to pull that needle out of her ear because she had really tough ears. It didn't want to come through. So we pierced her ears. And then my little Jessica, I went to this girl's house that I used to work with. Her name was Gloria Santos. And I, I remember her name. It's so funny how I remember her name. But anyway, she, she worked with me when I worked at the county home. And we, as soon as we walked into her house, Jessica started crying. And Jessica was one of these kids that if she saw you, and she'd make an instant, and she'd say, I don't like you, or you're, you're not nice. or She would make an instant decision whether you were good or bad. And apparently she didn't like this Gloria at all. And she got her ears pierced. And then Jessica, then Laura, we went to the laundromat. There was a guy that was doing them at the laundromat in Westfield. So I went there and she had one done and then he did the other. Where Emily, we went to the mall and the two girls made a little black dot on her ear and they both had a gun and they said one, two, three, snap. And they did her ears. And she was probably the oldest when the ears got done, but she it went real well. Um, so that was the ear piercing thing. I guess I did find something to talk about. So I will um, say goodbye, and I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye.